The Rat Medic School you might have already heard of problem based learning. This is because it's a form of teaching used in medical schools throughout the UK and abroad. Now if you're applying to medical school it's important that you have an understanding of what problem based learning is. And this is because it might help you decide which medical schools you want to apply for. It's also important if you have an interview for a medical school that you understand what problem based learning is as well. And this is because it's a question that often gets asked in medical school interviews. Hi, my name's Colin and I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. I'm also currently doing a Masters in Health Professions Education. Now, in this video I'm going to be talking about what is problem-based learning, who uses problem-based learning, how a PBL session is structured, what skills you can gain from problem-based learning, and what are the benefits and disadvantages of PBL. So, what is problem-based learning? Well, problem-based learning is a form of teaching that was developed by McMaster University in the 1950s. And the reason it came about was their medical students at the time felt that what they learned in their pre-clinical years had little relevance to the day-to-day -day practice of a doctor. Basically, they were learning really in-depth anatomy, physiology, cellular biology, pharmacology, all these things really, really in-depth, going through textbooks and textbooks and textbooks, and struggling to relate that to the sort of day-to-day -day role of a doctor. So, to be fair to McMaster University, they listened. And what they did was they developed this new style of teaching, home-based learning. And what problem-based learning focused on was developing cases which link what the students were learning to actual clinical practice. But not only that, they developed a new way to deliver this teaching. So rather than having 300 odd students in a big lecture hall with one lecturer standing at the front and talking to these students for hours and hours on end, instead they took a small group of students, put them in a tutorial room, gave them a facilitator who was either a clinician or a university tutor and taught this way. But rather than having the facilitator do all the teaching, teaching itself was student-led. So essentially what that meant was the students were leading the session, the facilitator would take a step back and only intervene at appropriate times. So the facilitator would either be a clinician or a university tutor. One of their roles could be they could relate what was learned in the session back to clinical practice. So the key point is problem-based learning focuses on the students. You have these small group tutorials with eight to 10 students a facilitator and they're given these students are given a clinical case and these students will work their way through this clinical case with a facilitator taking a hands-off approach so essentially the students are leading the session facilitators can chip in relating it back to clinical practice the main purpose of the facilitator is to take a step back approach essentially the learning is student-centered now there are three key factors which are required for a problem-based session to work you need problems which are used to simulate discussion and interaction. You need either university tutors or clinicians to act as facilitators. And you need a group of students who are willing to work together and to ha have discussions and interact to try and resolve these problems created by the clinical case. Now there are four key principles that problem-based learning hopes to cover and these were developed again by McMaster University in the 1950s. So the first key principle is context. These Problem-based learning sessions should relate back to clinical practice. They should be relevant. Second key principle is collaboration. These students should be working together, they should be interacting, having discussions to help facilitate their learning. Then you have construction. Now construction basically means that these students are going to be building upon their own learning. So they're going to be gaining new bits of knowledge and adding bits together to help get a better overall picture and better understanding of what they're trying to learn. And the fourth key principle is self-directed learning. Essentially what this means is once the students have had their discussion and created their questions for the problem-based learning session, they will go away on their own and research these topics, and research these key learning outcomes. And it's this self-directed learning that will help these students with reflection, gaining a better understanding of what information they've not acquired and what they need to go and research, and just help them develop their overall research skills. Now overall, the problem-based component of problem-based learning, in medical schools anyway, should focus on clinical cases. So these sessions should relate back to actual clinical practice. A lot of the cases that are used in PBL sessions are based on actual patients. Obviously, the names and things have been changed for anonymity, but they're based on things that have actually happened in real life. And this can help the students understand why what they're learning is important and how it relates back to clinical practice. Now, moving on to who uses problem-based learning. Well, problem-based learning is used by different medical schools across the UK and across the globe. The BMA have recently released an article in 2021 which goes through which medical schools in the UK primarily use problem-based learning. And I've put a link to this article in the description down below. And each medical school uses problem-based learning in slightly different ways, but all medical schools should follow the four key principles which we just discussed. Now, the medical schools which focus on problem-based learning as per this BMA article include Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, Queen Mary, Peninsula, Sheffield, Hull York Medical School, Keele, Arts and East Anglia. And as you can see from the number of universities that primarily use problem-based learning, it's still quite a significant component of medical school education in the UK. 
So, how is the problem-based learning session structured? Well, first of all, the students will go through the clinical cases and they'll discuss any terms or any points that they're unsure about or don't quite know what they mean. For example, some medical students when they first begin might not have heard of the term PE or pulmonary embolism. So they'll, just, they'll discuss as a group to try and identify any issues that they're not sure of. The second part is, these students will discuss together what they think are the key components of this clinical case. For example, the students might identify that the case includes a patient with a pulmonary embolism, so they might identify that one of the key points is identifying what are the risk factors for a PE. The next step is to then discuss as a group and brainstorm what are the main issues within the clinical case. The fourth point is these students will then group and structure this brainstorming session. The fifth point is these students will then identify what they think they need to learn from this clinical case. Essentially, they'll start creating learning objectives for the problem-based learning session. So one potential learning objective may be to identify what medications can be given to reduce the risk of a pulmonary embolism forming. Now the sixth part of problem-based learning is these students will then go away on their own and research their learning objectives. So they'll all individually go away and research these learning objectives so that when they come back they can then discuss this together as a group. The third point is these students then come back as a group for another PBL session and discuss what they learned. And this can help some students identify if they've missed anything. They can also share their resources and they can essentially teach each other in this session as well. So if someone's not quite picked something up, another student can teach them and that way they all learn the group together. Essentially, problem-based learning is identifying as a group what you don't know, figuring out what you need to know, then going away and researching the missing information. And another point, when these students are going away and researching their topic and their learning objectives for the following PBL session, the university will also often provide further teaching sessions such as lectures or clinical placements which relate back to the initial problem-based learning scenario. So everything sort of links together and this again helps to facilitate the students' learning. So what skills are gained from problem-based learning? Well, the first skill that's gained is self-directed learning. These students are responsible for going away and researching their own topics and own learning objectives. And they're responsible for finding their own good sources of information, whether that's a textbook or articles or using some of the university lectures that they've already had. But it's hoped over time that these students will develop good researching skills and they can take these skills into other scenarios. For example, if they're on a clinical placement and they come across a medication that they're not sure of, they'll have the skill set to go away and find a good source of information to learn about that medication and then bring that back to their clinical practice. The second skill that's developed through PBL sessions is reflection. Now students will often have to reflect on their own learning in the second PBL session. Essentially, if they don't know something but their peers do know it, that may lead to them thinking, wait, I need to go back and learn that. I need to go and do a bit more studying. What resources did they use? And that's important. Being able to sort of look at, reflect back on yourself and think, am I missing something or do I need to do something differently? It's important and it's also actively encouraged in all healthcare professions. Essentially, throughout your career, you're gonna be continuously reflecting on what you do and how you learn in clinical practice. The third skill that's developed is teamwork. Through the PBL sessions, these students are gonna be working in groups and working as part of a team. They're gonna be listening to each other, discussing what they've found, maybe disagreeing at times, but actively encouraged to take other people's opinions on board. And this is important. As a healthcare professional, you work as part of a multidisciplinary team. You're constantly working with other people. You're constantly working in collaboration with others. Fourth skill that's learned is self-motivation. These students are being pushed to go away and research these topics. That responsibility falls upon the students. It's up to the students to organize their time and get this work done. Now moving on to the benefits of problem-based learning. Now one study by Abdul Karim, Shween and Ford in 2018 used surveys to obtain qualitative data to find out what students felt were the benefits of problem-based learning. Now, the results of the study showed that students felt that they had better team working skills and were actually encouraged as, to work as part of a team during their PBL sessions. Another study by Coetel in 2008 found that doctors who had attended a problem-based learning university were better at dealing with uncertainty than doctors who had attended a traditional medical school. Now this is important because doctors are constantly facing new challenges and unexpected challenges as part of their day-to-day -day role for example, the COVID-19 pandemic. And this study suggested that those doctors who attended a problem-based learning university were better at dealing with this uncertainty. Problem-based learning is thought to encourage students to apply their knowledge to clinical cases and how it relates to actual clinical scenarios, rather than just learning a list of facts. Other benefits of problem-based learning sessions include actually encouraging students to participate in their learning. Essentially, if you've got a lecture full of 300 medical students and one lecturer, it's really difficult to identify if someone's not turned up for your lecture. 
but if you've got a problem based learning session with 8 to 10 students in it, it's pretty obvious if someone hasn't turned up. And also it's kind of letting the team down as well. If you have less people, you all have to do more work and you have to make up for that missing person. So it does actually encourage students to engage in the teaching in medical schools. Problem-based learning also encourages students to reflect and identify if they're missing any information or if they're falling behind with, when compared with their peers. If everyone else in the session knows the information but one student doesn't, for example, this can encourage them to try and make up for some lost learning or encourage them to go away and do a bit more research. Another study by Schmidt et al in 2006 found that doctors who had attended a PBL university had better problem solving skills but were also better at planning their work effectively. Now, this is really important as a doctor because you can't learn everything. So many things that you need to know as a doctor. It's important that you're able to go away and look up information and resolve any problems that crop up. This is confirmed by another study which again identified that students who had attended a PBL university had typically had better problem solving skills. Now moving on to the disadvantages of problem-based learning. That same study I discussed a second ago by Schmidt et al did however find that students who had attended the PBL university didn't know any more information than students who'd attended the traditional university. Essentially their knowledge retention was just the same. And this is in keeping with a literature review by Colliver in 2000 which suggested that students who attended the PBL university had no better knowledge retention than other students and it didn't improve their knowledge retention when working in clinical practice either. Another drawback of problem-based learning is it's sometimes sarcastically called teach yourself medicine. Essentially because you don't have a lecturer standing at the front and giving you information, you're responsible for going away to get that information yourself, hence teach yourself medicine. Another issue with problem-based learning is it's really resource intensive. As I just mentioned, you don't have one lecturer standing at the front in one room with all the students in it. You need multiple rooms, multiple tutors and facilitators. You have much smaller groups and it's just much more resource intensive. You also have to create these clinical cases and make sure that they're up to date. All the students have the same resources available to them. Another issue with problem-based learning is some of the students find it really difficult to understand what they're supposed to learn and what they don't need to know. As I said before, medicine's a huge topic and it's really difficult to pinpoint what you need to learn. And as these students are creating, up, creating their own learning objectives, sometimes they might not be identifying what's really important or what's needed for their exams, for example. And it kind of falls to the facilitator to sort of guide these students to make sure that what they're learning is what they need to know for that situation. Also, a reflective article by Chang in 2006 identified that if a student within the group was considered an expert on a specific topic, maybe if they'd done a degree pre previously and they knew more information than the rest of the group. This could lead to one of two scenarios happening. The student might become overbearing and give, sort of provide all the answers to all the other students and essentially spend more time talking than everyone else, which means everyone else kind of gets to take a step back and not really engage with the session. Or this expert student might do the opposite and take a step back, in which case more the other students have more work to do to compensate for this member basically not really doing very much. But either way, that expert can sometimes shift the group dynamic and make it the whole session a bit more challenging. In conclusion, problem-based learning is used by multiple medical schools, both in the UK and abroad. Although it's used differently by each medical school, the four key principles should always be followed and the sessions should always follow a similar structure and format. There are some obvious benefits to problem-based learning. It is widely thought that students who have attended the PBL university will have better problem-solving skills when compared with those who attended a traditional university. You might often hear the phrase, you might not know as much as someone who attended a traditional university, but you'll be much better at finding out information throughout your medical career. And one of the main drawbacks of problem-based learning is there's been no significant evidence which shows that problem-based learning actually helps improve knowledge retention. You're not gonna know more information than anyone who's attended any other medical school. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel.